Come along as we step into the historic halls and rooms where Pope Francis will dwell. The respected Pope Francis, the bigwig of the Catholic Church, recently made heads turn by talking about the arrival of the Antichrist. His words threw everyone for a loop, making folks wonder what spooky creature might be creeping around, maybe even living among us without us having a clue. For more than two centuries, the Catholic Church has been grappling with some seriously unsettling questions. When's the rapture going to happen? Will it go down before, during, or after a period of crazy trials and tribulations, just like the Bible predicts? This video is diving into Pope Francis's surprise revelation about who this Antichrist character is and what Christians believe about their arrival. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages if you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. So, Pope Francis, this big shot in the Catholic scene, spilled the beans that the Antichrist is already here, among us regular folks. He's all about sticking to the old-school Christian teachings, especially the ones about end-of-the-world stuff, and he's pulling info straight from the Bible and divine whispers. That's why he's all convinced that this Antichrist dude's arrived and might be gearing up to wreck the world. According to Pope Francis, this Antichrist is playing hide-and-seek, just biding time to show his true colors. But hold up. While Pope Francis talks a lot about figuring out good from the Antichrist's evil plans, his teachings mainly revolve around social justice, taking care of the environment, and showing some mercy. Now, let's nail down who this Antichrist is. This guy's got some roots deep in history and religion, especially in Christian theology. It's all tied to the study of end times or final events in Christian beliefs. The Antichrist is kind of the bad guy in these apocalyptic prophecies that pop up in the Bible, mainly in books like Daniel, 1 John, and Revelation. Different Christian groups see this figure in different ways. Some see the Antichrist as this one mega-villain who's supposed to show up in an epic showdown with Christ. Others take it more symbolically, seeing the Antichrist as a representation of anti-Christian ideas or oppressive systems throughout history. And here's the kicker, this belief about the Antichrist's arrival hinges on something called Christian millennial thinking. It's all about this millennium or thousand years, tied to this big event or era that's supposed to mark the end of history. According to some beliefs, after all the apocalypse chaos, there's this thousand-year stretch where things are supposed to be peaceful and good, known as the Millennium. But hold your horses, this millennial thinking isn't just a Christian gig. Other major religions like Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism have their own versions, envisioning significant societal changes or judgment days. And get this. It's not just confined to religious chit-chat. This millennial buzz has seeped into other stuff too, like politics. Back in the 19th and 20th centuries, people were hyped up about creating these perfect societies, often tied to a specific year or era. Sounds familiar, right? Picture this, throughout human history, there's been this buzz about big changes, something beyond the regular course of time. This vibe, known as millennialism, comes in different flavors and is all about finding deeper meaning in life's journey, painting visions of epic changes or a profound awakening that goes way beyond the usual. So, what's the deal with millennialism? Well, there are a few types to wrap your head around. Premillennialism, postmillennialism, and a millennialism. Premillennialism is all about Jesus Christ's grand comeback and the start of his reign on earth. In simple terms, it says Jesus will pop back before a thousand years of peace and goodness. 
followers of this vibe expect a series of events, with Jesus' return being the first stop. They reckon Jesus will set up shop on earth for a thousand years, as the book of Revelation hints at. This take often sticks to a strict reading of the Bible's prophecies, claiming they foretell this earthly reign of Christ. It's like believing in a future where everything's peaceful and fair, unlike the chaos we're dealing with now. Now, that's just one take. Others, like post-millennialism, say Jesus will show up after a long phase of Earth being all rainbows and sunshine due to Christianity's influence. This vibe's optimistic, thinking the world will slowly get better, leading to a golden age even before Jesus swings by. And then there's a millennialism, which sees that thousand-year reign mentioned in the Bible as more symbolic than an actual chunk of time. Within this premillennial crew, there's even more splitting hairs about when this rapture thing happens, where believers supposedly get whisked away to hang out with Jesus. Some folks in this camp believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, claiming believers will peace out before a rocky time on earth. The word rapture might not be in the English Bible, but the Greek version talks about harpezo, which is pretty much the same gig. Premillennialism has been quite the hit in various Christian groups, especially the evangelicals and the die-hard fundamentalists. They dig it because it's a straight-up reading of the Bible and promises this clear-as-day kingdom of Christ on earth. Now, post-millennialism is all about this long stretch of humans getting their act together before Jesus drops by. These folks are all about the power of Christianity making the world a better place. They're super hopeful, thinking that embracing Christian principles will lead to a world where peace, justice, and morality rule the roost. The whole idea is that by following these principles, society as a whole will get this major upgrade, almost like a utopian vibe. What sets post-millennialism apart is that it's not about Jesus returning before or during this thousand-year stretch, it's more about the progress humanity makes guided by Christian values. Let's dive into different takes on this whole millennial thing. No, not the generation, but the idea of big changes in the future, according to some biblical prophecies. So, post-millennialism is like the ultimate optimist in the room. It's all about seeing the gospel gradually winning over evil and making God's influence stronger in the world. This positive spin on biblical prophecies gives folks hope and a drive to make society better spreading those Christian values around. It's kind of the opposite of premillennialism, which thinks Jesus will swoop in before a thousand-year earthly rule. They're all about this concrete kingdom of Christ on earth, like a literal reign from Jerusalem, based on Bible bits like Revelation. Now, amillennialism? That's a whole different vibe. They're not really into taking that thousand-year thing literally. Instead, they see it as more of a symbol, representing an undefined but complete period. Their focus? More on the here and now, how Christ's influence is alive in believers' lives rather than some future earthly kingdom. Where amillennialism differs is in how they interpret stuff from Revelation and other biblical texts. They see it more symbolically, emphasizing spiritual truths over a step-by-step -step timeline of events. See, each of these views, premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism, has its own take on how things will wrap up in the end, especially when it comes to Christ's return. Premillennialists are like, Christ comes first, then the earthly reign. They're all about this literal thousand-year reign of Christ and a clear distinction between now and that future kingdom. Post-millennialists, on the other hand, think the earthly kingdom will slowly come about as society gets better due to Christian influence. It's this whole optimistic view of a transformed world before Christ shows up. 
amillennialists? Well, they're more about the spiritual side of things. They don't see this thousand-year reign as a literal timeline, but focus on how Christ's influence is ongoing in believers' lives. Each of these takes on millennialism shapes how believers understand what's coming in the future and how they see Christ's return. Now, about the Antichrist, folks have predicted this character showing up in different forms, from premillennialism to postmillennialism and amillennialism. It's all about these different theological views on how the millennial kingdom connects to Christ's return. Premillennialists are all about Christ coming first, then this earthly reign where evil gets the boot, and peace rules the roost often drawn from passages in Revelation. Postmillennialists are like, let's improve society and spread Christianity, then Christ shows up. They envision a world where most people embrace Christianity, leading to peace and prosperity. Amillennialists? They're less about a literal timeline and more about the spiritual side of things. They see this thousand-year thing as a symbol, focusing on Christ's influence in believers' lives rather than a future earthly kingdom. Each of these views paints a different picture of what's to come, especially regarding Christ's return and how they see the grand finale of everything. Let's unpack these millennial views. It's not about Y2K or the next big party. It's more about some serious beliefs about Christ's return and the end times. So, there's this thing called amillennialism, where the thousand-year reign isn't taken literally. They see it more as the whole church age, Christ's rule in the hearts of believers right now, rather than a future reign on earth. For them, Christ's comeback is all about the final judgment and setting up the eternal state, not some separate phase after the thousand years. Then, there's premillennialism, these folks are all about a literal earthly reign of Christ after his return. They're picturing a clear thousand-year gig with Christ ruling from Jerusalem, based on bits from the Bible, especially Revelation. And let's not forget post-millennialism. They're like, let's improve society first, and then Christ will swing by. It's this hopeful idea of a transformed world before Christ shows up. When it comes to the Antichrist, though, it gets real interesting. They're seen as this slick, manipulative leader who's all about deceit. This figure is thought to have massive political and religious influence, gathering followers who might not even know the true evil behind the charming facade. Some folks think of the Antichrist as one person, while others see it more as a symbol of anything anti-Christian. But here's the kicker, this whole Antichrist thing isn't just in Christian beliefs. Islamic beliefs have a similar concept called Al-Masi Ad-Dajjal, and in non-religious settings, the idea of an Antichrist-like figure can describe manipulative political leaders or ideologies. Throughout history, this concept of the Antichrist has been linked to some big names like Nero or Hitler as people try to connect prophecies to what's happening in their time. It's adaptable, evolving, and resonating with different folks across cultural and religious backgrounds. Now, Pope Francis chimed in about the Antichrist, and it's caused quite the stir. His words got people talking, from fear to curiosity. Some folks see it as a spiritual wake-up call diving into scriptures to decode what's up. Others take it with a pinch of salt, seeing it more as metaphorical than an actual prediction. And you know how the internet goes, memes, jokes, and satire come out to play. Some use humor to deal with it, while others use satire to question the whole thing. Theological perspectives are all over the place with this revelation. Different beliefs, different interpretations, lots of discussions and debates within religious groups. Let's dive into the realm of the Antichrist and the end times. For some believers, 
the Pope's views are gospel, they find comfort in their spiritual leader's guidance. Yet, others might see it differently, sparking debates within their groups. The Pope's talk about the Antichrist has folks talking faith and global events, mixing spirituality with real-world happenings. It's fascinating how people react, some feel the urgency, re-evaluating their lives, while others stick to their routines, acknowledging the talk but not letting it shake their world. How this revelation fits into someone's life totally depends on their faith, cultural background, and how they see religious teachings. Now, onto Pope Francis shaking things up, pointing fingers at the Antichrist. Reading the Bible's chapters, we get a glimpse of what's in store for us, and guess what? It's not all sunshine and rainbows. There's this spooky character, the Antichrist, who pops up in Revelation 13. He's all about making people serve him, marking them with his symbol. And then came the jaw-dropping news from Pope Francis, saying this dude is already among us. Cue the mystery music, who could this sneaky manipulator be? A religious figure? A political hotshot? Or even someone linked to today's tech scene? Let's rewind to a not-so-long-ago moment when Pope Francis, the 266th Pope, threw this curveball. With his deep understanding of the end times, he spilled the beans about this elusive antichrist, playing hide-and-seek in the shadows, waiting for their grand reveal. Pope Francis, known for preaching discernment and the eternal battle of good versus evil, dishes out some top-notch life lessons on mercy, social justice, and taking care of Mother Earth. He's got this intriguing take linking the idea of the Ten Kings in Bible prophecy with the end times and this sneaky antichrist. Before we dissect Pope Francis's revelation, let's remember there's a whole buffet of ideas about who this antichrist might be. Some say a wealthy tycoon might fit the bill, waving stacks of cash and power. They point fingers at verses that hint at traits found in loaded folks, charm, power, and the ability to pull people under their spell. But hold up, this is just one theory in a sea of interpretations. A verse from Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18 often gets airtime, hinting at this billionaire antichrist stamping everyone with a mark, controlling their every move. People love digging into this verse linking it to how big shots could shape global trade and business. But hey, scholars and religious bigwigs sound the alarm, warning against reading too much into it all. They say these apocalyptic writings are more about symbols than literal billionairehood. Another theory floating around town is this Antichrist showing up in religious robes. Skepticism clouds the views about religious leaders, stirring doubts. So, what do you think about Pope Francis dropping the Antichrist bombshell? This revelation is sparking debates, turning the spotlight on faith in what's to come. It's a wild ride exploring these ideas, mixing ancient prophecies with our modern world. But hey, it's just one of many theories swirling around about the end times and this mysterious figure lurking in the shadows. In the world of eschatology, some bits in the Bible hint at the Antichrist being a spiritual leader. Paul's writings in 2 Thessalonians and John's verses in 1 John warn about these anti-Christian figures. They aren't specific about individuals but suggest these Antichrists might be charming leaders swaying folks away from traditional Christian paths. Even Jesus chimed in talking about the end times and false preachers doing miraculous stunts to fool believers. It's like a caution sign against smooth-talking leaders misleading their flock. Now, let's step into the debate zone where folks chat about the nature of end times, Jesus' return, and prophecies. 
Over time, scholars and theologians have spun various views, adding layers to Christian beliefs about the future. There's a cool twist where some believe the Antichrist might play the political game. This idea flirts with the concept of a political bigwig bringing faiths together while secretly undermining traditional beliefs. Pope Francis digs deep into these themes, often talking about false prophets and deceivers. But to decode the Pope's words about the Antichrist, we've got to revisit the Bible. What's the deal with the Antichrist in biblical scriptures, especially in the book of Daniel? Daniel doesn't name drop Antichrist, but there are hints and visions. Picture a goat in Daniel 8, this symbolic creature represents a ruthless, powerful leader. Some tie this to the Antichrist, a smart, destructive political head. In various chapters, you'll find cryptic descriptions that some scholars link to this figure. There's talk about a prideful horn, big talker, and someone disrespectful to women, traits often associated with this Antichrist character. In one of Paul's letters, he talked about spirits leading people astray from true faith. No direct Antichrist talk, but it echoes the theme of deception and straying from genuine beliefs linking back to a political figure misleading people. A spicy notion is that the Antichrist might sneak into the church as a leader gone rogue. Jesus himself warned about these seemingly righteous yet dangerous figures inside the church, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Peter added to the mix, cautioning against false teachers corrupting the faith. All these religious teachings hint at the Antichrist possibly arising as a leader from within the church, someone who's lost touch with the true spirit. Before taking on a political persona, the whole concept of an apostate church leader as the Antichrist shines a light on the hazards of spiritual deceit. It screams out the importance of being able to see through the right from the wrong. Even though the Antichrist is often depicted as an actual person, these Bible teachings reveal traits and possible origins, stressing the need to stay alert and stick to the real deal. Let's dive into the wild speculations people have conjured about the Antichrist's appearance and methods. Brace yourself for a crazy one. Some think the Antichrist might pop up as an alien. Picture this, this clever and deceitful antichrist goes all extraterrestrial, creating a web of lies that intertwines cosmic mysteries with biblical prophecies. But this ain't your typical men in black story. Nope, it's way more complicated. Imagine this alien, masquerading as a human, living among us, blending in, and doing all the human stuff. It's like an undercover mission shaping the world's events from behind the scenes. This tricky antichrist would probably engage in social events, dabble in global politics, and even toss cash at good causes. It's a whole big show. But here's the twist, aliens pack some next-level powers beyond our wildest dreams. This antichrist-alien hybrid could possibly mess with people's minds pulling the strings on global events, turning us all into unwitting pawns in a cosmic game of chess. Now imagine world leaders, celebs, and the big shots all blindly following this alien figure who's perfectly suited up as a human. It's like a global blockbuster where the Antichrist stages a show for the whole world. But it ain't just about physical shenanigans, it gets all deep into the spiritual realm, offering enlightenment, salvation, and multiple paths to spiritual perfection. Cue the cosmic clash between real faith and the deceivers. The kicker in this tale? As folks uncover the truth, the Antichrist's mask slips, revealing a sinister alien force pulling the strings behind our history. And boom! It's existential crisis time. This cosmic drama blurs the lines between truth and illusion, challenging what we think, 
what we believe, in the whole good versus evil dilemma. This wild and offbeat narrative weaves biblical prophecies into the enigmatic realm of alien deception, giving us a tale that twists our perceptions and makes us question the typical ideas about the end of days. It's like a wake-up call about lies, our vulnerabilities, and the hazy boundary between what's known and unknown. Imagine people unknowingly worshipping an alien, thinking it's human, only to discover later it's the Antichrist, talk about an unexpected turn. This vivid tale sparks from the notion of a possible end-of-the-world scenario, suggesting that powerful aliens might exploit their charms or advanced tech to manipulate and mislead humanity. These cunning aliens could pull off miracles or flaunt tech far beyond our understanding, drawing awe and admiration from followers worldwide. They'd pitch a perfect future, blend different belief systems, and throw in some universal themes, creating a sense of spiritual unity among their followers. These beings could offer groundbreaking solutions, curing global crises, and gaining even more devoted followers. Their arrival could coincide with a major global crisis, making their promises of salvation and prosperity all the more appealing. Charismatic leaders might find a more receptive audience in such uncertain times. The people who serve as beacons of hope and guidance often hold layers to their identity. Initially celebrated, any small signals or instances of moral uncertainty might be brushed off when first noticed. However, once the true nature of this praised figure unfolds, it can leave followers feeling surprised and disappointed. If this truth eventually comes out, it could potentially shake the very foundations of faith among the devoted, forcing them to confront the stark contrast between the paradise they were promised and the reality of deceit and manipulation they now face. This alien tale probes into the dynamics of influential leadership, the influence of new technologies, and the vulnerabilities people face when their lives undergo drastic shifts. It's essentially a science fiction story that delves into esoteric religious concepts, but it pushes us to consider the complexity of belief, deception, and the outcomes of blind devotion. John Marr's book Aliens and the Antichrist is a treasure trove on this notion. It thoroughly explores the intriguing connections between aliens and the Antichrist, painting a vivid picture of this hypothetical scenario. And here's a wild question, why does the Antichrist seem to have ties to the Roman Empire? Could the Antichrist be more of an idea than an actual person? The link between the Antichrist and the Roman Empire is more about history, politics, and culture than a direct biblical interpretation. It's rooted in the significant influence and dominance of the Roman Empire over centuries, known for its vast expanse military prowess, and political control. The theory suggests that a world leader akin to the Antichrist will emerge, aiming to revive a global dominion akin to the Roman Empire's rule. Advocates of this theory refer to historical instances when leaders attempted to establish universal authority, drawing parallels to how the Antichrist might pursue a similar agenda today. A crucial element of this theory hinges on the symbolism of Rome, power, governance, and cultural influence. It speculates that the Antichrist might resurrect elements of the Roman Empire, either symbolically or literally, to amass global power. This could involve political alliances, economic domination, or even the creation of a centralized world government drawing upon the lasting cultural legacy left by Rome in architecture, governance, and legal systems. This theory thrives on the contemporary era of globalization, envisioning the Antichrist harnessing modern tools like economic alliances, digital communication, and political power to forge a global empire akin to the Roman Kingdom. It underscores the significance of technological advancement and seamless communication, 
tools that the Antichrist might exploit to surveil, manipulate, and establish tight control over economies and information. In this context, the Antichrist is seen as a masterful political strategist, forging alliances, reshaping geopolitical dynamics, and capitalizing on crises to advance personal agendas. The emphasis lies on political acumen and adeptness in navigating the intricate landscape of international relations. Economic supremacy is regarded as a pivotal strategy for rebuilding the Roman Empire where the Antichrist could potentially seize control over global economies, trade agreements, and financial institutions, effectively dominating the entire economic sphere. Beyond political and historical facets, there's the religious facet, the concept of the Antichrist's spirit. It transcends specific scripture references, focusing on a broader, more subtle force opposing Christ's teachings. It isn't confined to a singular individual, instead, it manifests in various forms, thoughts, and actions that contradict Christian teachings. This notion of the Antichrist's spirit originated from early Christian theology, evolving over time as theologians sought to comprehend spiritual warfare and the challenges faced by Christians. It's often perceived as a pervasive force subtly influencing people groups, and ideas, going against fundamental Christian values and beliefs. This spirit embodies thoughts or actions that alter or deny core Christian doctrines, such as the divinity of Christ, the saving grace of his sacrifice, and the sole authority of the Bible as truth. The Antichrist spirit lurks in ideas that directly challenge or disregard foundational beliefs. Many see it embodied in extremist views openly battling Christianity or in secular ideals sidelining religious convictions. The Apostle John's writings touch on the Antichrist and his predecessors, demonstrating how they too were influenced by this spirit, akin to Christians being filled with the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, Contemporary times witness a decline in reverence for Jesus Christ and a surge in animosity towards God. Disorder seems to escalate with time, underscoring this growing disrespect. Not long ago, Bibles were a common sight in American schools and UK hotels. However, they're gradually vanishing from public spaces worldwide, paralleled by a diminishing fear of God among people. These shifting societal norms are inadvertently paving the way for the Antichrist's arrival. There's a misconception that the Antichrist will revolutionize the world upon arrival. In reality, the groundwork is already being laid by the Antichrist spirit, fostering a climate where people are less apprehensive about God. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.